Hi, welcome to the Creative Treehouse. My name is Robin Broom and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today's project is a pop-up vase card. I already gave away the one that I want to kind of copy and so I took a picture of it and that is my picture and ours is going today. Good look a lot like that. I'm going to change up just a few things, but let's see. Let's get started. I'm going to use that as a reference for my flowers. I'm changing up a little bit of the colors and things. The card base is the typical five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And I am going to be using, I think the last time for the other one, I used I used Misty Moonlight, but I think I also used Balmy Blue. And this time I'm just going to use Misty Moonlight. So the so I've got uh, this was cut at let me think about it. It was five, this one is five and a quarter by four, as is this one. And then this one I ran through, they're both the Misty Moonlight, I ran through the really cool embossing folder. The Country in, I think it's Country in Blossoms is the name of it, part of the suite. Uh, love it, love these colors, glad Misty Moonlight is back. And then uh, this piece I believe is four, it's definitely four across, and I think it's four by three. And it is just the basic white. And I used, for the first time, I used a stamp set called, a new one called Courage and Faith. So first time I've used this. But I, the one that I just sent is for someone that is undergoing brain surgery this week. And so definitely wanted some um, scripture in there for her. And the one that I'm making here is for somebody that just had her hip replaced. So anyway, another good one. So those are great verses. So this is the one that I chose for that. And use the, this is, I used Night of Navy here and the Balmy Blue, no, Boho Blue, sorry, Boho Blue for the two leaves or whatever. So um, I'm going to focus on the front later, but what we have to do is we have to go ahead and adhere all of these pieces before we do our vase. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way and then we'll work on our vase and I'll tell you all the, the bits and pieces and I will have measurements and things on my blog. All right, so I'm going to just use my liquid glue and get these all in place. I'm going to turn it this way. Okay. And then you could, if you wanted to, you could just do um, strips. You wouldn't have to do an entire piece that is embossed, but let's see. And you would probably want to put just a little bit extra glue when it is uh, an embossed folder like this, just to be sure that you get your glue in all the, the nooks and crannies. Okay, I'll flip that over. All right, looking good. Okay, and then this one. And all of these are just completely done with uh, liquid glue. No dimensionals or anything on this part. All right, and I'm just going to kind of center that one. Now on the card that I did previously, I wrote on the back of it, and you can definitely put a piece of um, with. Uh, Oh, I almost said Whisper White, Basic White, or whatever on the back. Whatever you choose, you could probably even write um, on this color, the Misty Moonlight or the Boho Blue. All right, so we've got that. Let me just, I'm going to slide that out of the way just a little bit, and we're going to focus on the, the vase. Now, the vase is a piece of five by two and a quarter and I'm going to use the designer series paper. So for the previous one, I used this. This is uh, that lovely DSP, the Countryside Inn, and this one had the fox on it. And I'm going to, similar colors, but I'm going to use this piece. And again, it's five by two and a quarter. And the key here is how you score it and everything. Um, and how you cut it, mo mace, mo bleh, mostly. So um, I watched a video where it didn't matter which side you did which way, but 
It does, because I cut it this way and my poor fox was going to be upside down on my vase and Mr. Fox did not want to be on his head. So this was, ended up being a trash piece. So I don't want my birds on their head. So I'm gonna hopefully do it correctly and we'll do that together. So I'll show you how to do it. Let me get my trimmer out and we're going to first score it. We're going to score it at an inch on both ends and this is with the five inch piece up at the top. Of course I've got my wrong trimmer and this one doesn't happen to have any of my blades in it. Isn't that interesting? Well I'll have to let me grab my trimmer and I'll the, uh, the trimmer that has the blades in it. All right so got the birds. We're going to do a score at one inch here and I'm going to just find it easier just to flip it and score it at one here or you could score it at four. But I'm just going to flip it. All right so I just scored on both of those. Okay and now what I'm going to do and I think it might be easier well I guess it doesn't matter. I am going to go to three inch three quarters, the three quarter mark, and I'm looking right here. And actually, I think I am gonna flip it over. I think I can see it. I don't know that you guys can see it that well, but there, there's the score line, and I'm going to cut just down to that score line. So I'm gonna start with my blade at the top, and I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna bring it down right to that, and there is a line right here. So I really like that on the, the blade so that you can see. All right, and now I'm gonna do three quarters right here. So that means eat, you'll end up with three sections that are three quarter. And I'm going just down to that one inch mark with my blade. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side at three quarters. And I'm gonna, let me, I'm going to fold it just a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, so I've got it at three quarters. And then I'm going to take the blade and I'm going to go down to the one inch mark. Almost there. Sorry. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier to do this while I'm um, on top of it and not next to it. So, all right, and then three quarters again and bring it down to the one inch mark. Almost there. Okay. All right, so now we have it. It should have gone all the way to the score mark. All right, now I'll move out my trimmer that does have the blades in it. All right, now here is the tricky part. Here is where it does matter if you have a directional pattern. If you don't have a directional pattern, then it really shouldn't matter. So let me get my snips and what we're gonna do. Okay, so this was, this was the wrong way with Mr. Fox. So if you have a directional pattern, you want your two pieces to be on the right-hand side and your left piece to be, or your one piece to be on your left-hand side. So to do that, I'm going to pull these back on the score line and I'll use my snips and I'm just gonna cut that off. Okay, and so now I have on the right hand side the two. Okay, and on this one, we'll do, we're gonna pull that one back. And we're going to, we could use the trimmer to do this as well. And we're just gonna trim that off and trim this one off. And then we'll double check and make sure that ours looks just like that. And this would be correct, except for the fox is upside down. So this was the right, um, pattern the way the right way to do it if you have a directional pattern so I'm going to move the poor upside down fox out of the way and let's see what else we need to do next we there are other pieces besides this this one piece okay um, and I think do I need to I think I need to zoom in a little bit more let's see if I can zoom in just a touch all right see if it'll focus all right that's probably better. Okay, and so next what we need is you're gonna need two more pieces. You're gonna need a, a strip that's um, 5 8 by 3 and 7 8 and you're gonna score it at 3 8 okay? And that is basically your mechanism part. It is going to show, and so I wanted it to match my Misty Moonlight. 
because it's going to show. I thought about and I tried to see if you could tuck it up under this. You can't. It doesn't work. The mechanism won't work that way. So it definitely has to, unfortunately, be up on the top. All right, so I've got a Misty Moonlight piece here, and it's 5 8 by 3 and 7 8 scored at 3 8 and then I went ahead and I've, I've put tear in tape right here, okay? So we've got that piece, and you need a stopper piece. The stopper piece is 1 half by 2, and that one's not, it doesn't matter on the color because that one's going to be completely hidden. This one will be visible, but this one will be hidden. The stopper is a half by two. So those are the piece, pieces that you need. All right, I'm going to take the little templates away. And again, these will be on my blog. So if you need any of those dimensions. Um, and then, so what we're going to do is we're going to start putting the mechanism together. Okay, and one thing we're, on this piece... Let me be sure that I do it the correct way. We are going to put tear and tape on these two on the top on the colored side. Let me be sure I'm telling you that the right way. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to put tear and tape on this side on the the um, the side that you want up the the side that you want showing. Okay. So we're going to put tear and tape there. And when the reason we're using tear and tape is because um, it's a mechanism. It moves and tear and tape is a great uh, adhesive to use for things that uh, projects that move because it's a really strong adhesive. Okay. And all right. And if you mash it down, then it's easier to pull up. Okay. Opposite, we need to flip this over and we need to put tear and tape on this side of that one. Okay. We don't want it to go over just like that one just did, I think, but we can, because we don't want, want anything to get stuck anywhere, so that we will just f pull that over in just a few minutes. All right, so, all right, so, <laughs> let's start over again. <laughs> Not completely. Okay, so we've got this, the three and seven eighths by five eighths, and scored at three and an eighth or three eighths and that's where we're putting our tear and tape okay and then we've got this one and we're putting tear and tape on the colored side the the top side um, I guess it's all colored but the top side we're putting tear and tape here on these two then you're gonna flip it over put tear and tape on the single one okay and then now we're gonna take off the single one the tear and tape from it okay and it is gonna go right here okay it's gonna go on top of that one piece right there All right and then next I've already taken the tear and tape off of that I want my vase to be kind of lined up with the misty moonlight misty moonlight not the night of navy so I'm gonna just kind of lay it up here I'm gonna go bring this really close to the scored um, edge of my card the four and a quarter okay and then I'm going to close this up like that and then when I bring it back it kind of woo kind of does like that okay and that's what we want it to do all right now we need to put our mechanism our little stopper on and I think let's see I'm gonna add just another you can, I put tear tape on either either end of that. Let me just add just a wee bit more because I pulled it off earlier. Okay. So let me get all right, that should be good. All right, so and that is gonna go the stopper. So this is lined up here. The stopper is gonna go up against there. Okay, let me oops, let me curl my tear and tape over. So I don't want it to go over. I want it to get to be pretty close, okay? And then we're just gonna press that down. So there's tear and tape here and tear and tape under here. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna take the. Let me just flip the whole thing over. We're gonna take off the backing of the tear and tape on the two pieces, and we will almost be ready to see our vase pop up. Okay. Let me go through and any of these pieces that need to be flipped over let me flip those over all right now this is a little bit different all right we're gonna 
I'm going to take these. I'm going to fold them over on the score line. Try not to get my fingers all sticky with that stuff. And then I want to lay it down without letting it adhere. Kind of just very gently lay it down. Not all the way. Just get it really close. And then I'm going to take this. And as you see, it's going to move. And so it's moving this way, which is what we want it to do. So I'm just going to take it and keep it. I'm just lightly, lightly touching it until I can get it all the way closed and then I'll push it down. And that should make our vase pop up. So that's how that's done. Isn't that cool? So now we've got our little, our fun, fun vase, right? And now that we've gotten the cool part done, let's get to our flowers. Now I used um, the paper florist. Okay, and I used a bunch of those and they're just super fun. It is one thing that in the catalog that's just dies. There are not any, um, no stamps to it. It's just dies. So I am going to, I'm looking, I'm trying to make it a little bit like I did before. Instead of gluing those completely down, I am going to put um, at least two of them, probably these two, I'm going to put those up with some, and I've already put, I just, I just cut, they don't look lovely. I cut out of, mostly out of, a few of them were the Night of Navy, but I cut, I just randomly cut stems out of the Misty Moonlight, because they're not going to show, at least not, not on this one. All right, so I've got a couple dimensionals here and I'll put this flower in here and I'm not gonna, sometimes I will glue the stem. I'm not gonna glue the stem because he's gonna be, he's gonna be down. One thing that you need to check as you're doing all of these is you need to, on occasion, you need to close it and be sure because sometimes your flowers and things, leaves if you have them, might um, pop up and be further than you want them to be. And they'll be, you want the, them nothing to go over the edges okay so now I think I'm gonna actually glue him oh does he need one too oh why not I think it'll give it more dimensional dimension if you have a dimensional on it so I'm just putting two on there and just sticking him to the back and I'm not doing anything for his stem I'm gonna put him right there and do the same thing for this one that is the boho blue so i tried to get the colors that were opposite if you if i had gotten a misty moonlight it would not show up so this time i'm using not using misty moonlight and i'm using the knight of navy white and boho blue okay so we've got those and even that looks pretty cute so but i'm going to add a few more and this time i'm going to i'm going to be going for the glue and we're going to glue the stems and get them um, stick in different places so i think uh, i think i'm going to do this one here so i'm just going to take a little bit of the liquid glue normally i have my really thin bottle but I, it's not in my studio so but that is okay so i'm going to kind of determine where i want it to be and it's going to be right about there so i can probably even trim off a little bit of my stem and then i'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue and i'm going to adhere it i'm going to stick my fingers in and adhere it to the vase and i'm going to do that for several of them okay so i got that one going there Actually, I think I'm going to make it go over, and over a little bit further. That's the nice thing about the liquid glue is you've got more time to wiggle it around. All right, that looks good. All right, I am going to close it and make sure he doesn't come out. Ooh, look how close he came. All right, so we're going to move him a little bit more. He's over just a tiny bit. So that was a good example of how you need to check. All right, he's good now. All right, I'm going to put this guy. I'm going to put him down low like that. So he's going to be attached to the very front of the vase. And he's just going to, his little petals are going to overlap. Okay, and again, the glue is up under here. So I'm just kind of pushing it to get it to adhere. And I'll put this one about there. So, and they are just attached with the Tombow glue to the stems. Okay. And hold it there just for a second up underneath okay 
I should have more flowers, but I don't have one. I'm going to put this one in here. And then that should go about like so. And actually what I could even do is I could probably put a, a dimensional under that. He does not want to stick. Let's see. I may not have the glue for far enough down. Stick into my fingers. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I will put a couple of little ones. I'm going to put one here. And you definitely have to check because sometimes they will be in the way. And I'm going to put one here. Just kind of loose if I can. Like that. All right. I'm going to put him down. And I think I'm going to end up putting another flower on there at some point. I'm going to have to tuck him in because you don't want him over the edge. Oh, let's see. I think I need to change. He needs to be over here. So he's not the same color. All right. I'm going to have to double check that he is okay. Oop, my. Well, I see why I did that. Because <laughs> that's the same color. Okay. Not a problem. It's still good. Let's be sure. Oh, I know. That's what we... You, this is going to need to go up just a little bit higher because you don't want it to go... Be, to interfere with the mechanism here, the vase. So I'm going to see if I can realign him just a little bit. So he won't, the vase will not run over him. Bring him back this way. That should get it. And everything's closed up. That looks great. And then well, there it is. Isn't that fun? Oh my goodness. Love, love, love it. All right. And then on the front, what I did was I used another piece of uh, the white, the basic white. I like both sides. It's really hard to decide. And this one's cut a little bit smaller. This one is cut at five by three and three fourths because I liked the a little bit more of the blue edge showing. And then I took a piece of the DSP and this is uh, two by four and seven eighths because I just wanted an itty bitty border on this one. Okay, so it's gonna go right here on the left hand side like that. And then unlike my other one, I changed uh, my mind on which what I wanted to do and this sentiment came from I think it retired and I got it just in time the hope and prayer I thank God every time I think of you and I'm going to put that up on dimensionals up oh, you know what I forgot I wonder if I can pull that up really quick I was going to put a bow and the bow goes up under here actually it's going to be the, the kind of the cheaty one all right let's see if I can get this tucked under or not I got a lot of I got so excited that I went right on past it. All right, so that should work. Get this other end. Then, yep, that'll be good. All right, let me put some extra glue down here. Normally what I would have done was I would have adhered it on the back with some tear and tape that I wouldn't even take the, the backing off. But I just got, I got ahead of myself. Okay. I think it's still not quite under there enough. But I can put a glue dot and that would work. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece. And instead of making a bow, this other piece, we're just going to cut it. And a small piece, it is sticking to my gluey fingers. And I'm going to, <laughs> to pop it through and just make a little... Actually, it'll just be like a little knot. But even so, you'll have to be careful in mailing. And this one's a little bulkier than it could be, the whole card. Okay, and I don't have my scissors. My goods, uh, I don't want to use my snips on that. All right, let me put a little more glue, see if we can get this to the ribbon to cooperate. Hang on. Hang on. And lay down. Yes, I am so gluey now. I'm the glue girl. All right, so that looks good. And I'm going to put this one up on dimensionals, and we'll be done. And you will have made a pop-up card. 
All right, let's see. I'm going to put, oh, and what I did with this one is um, stamped it in Night of Navy, and it's on the um, Misty Moonlight. No, balmy blue. I mean, boho blue. I keep saying balmy. Boho blue. And then I did misty moonlight. Uh, die cut the little extra flowers out and put little dots of Night of Navy ink in the middle of it. And that is that. And the um, sentimental park. I'm sorry, I didn't say where that die came from. The sentimental park die. And the other one I had used... Uh, the stylish shapes I had used the circles so and I think where should we put it right about in here all right there it is okay and I'm gonna trim off those little things and that is it that's the card so if you haven't ever made a pop-up vase I whoop, I'm holding it in the wrong spot if you haven't ever made a pop-up vase maybe you'll try it it looks pretty cool and I love this DSP love the colors for this so but anyway kind of has a like a I don't know a Dutch feel or something so that's what it is let me pull out the, the zoom out just a little bit I think you'll be able to see better all right so that is it and that one is going to my friend who just had hip replacement that to be a very young age but anyway all right there's lots of people that need some encouragement maybe you can send one of those to them uh, make one and send it to them and thanks for watching thanks for joining me in the treehouse if you are not already a subscriber please hit the subscribe button and you can check out my blog and on my blog there'll be dimensions there'll be uh, a link to sign up for my newsletter which comes out on a weekly basis and that newsletter is full of good information of activities that are going on in the treehouse and some also some virtual ones and um, just all sorts of things sales and oh just all kinds of nuggets so um, thanks again for watching and if you don't do anything else subscribe to my youtube channel thanks i'll see you next time in the treehouse bye bye